Hey everyone, in this video we're going to continue our study of chapter 10 um, and doing correlation and in this section, section 10.2 and 10.3, we're going to talk about the line of regression, least squares regression line. So we're going to start with an example predicting heights from footprints. So the question is, can a footprint taken at the scene of a crime help to determine the height of the criminal? So in other words, is there an association between a person's height and their foot length? So we took a sample of 20 students, measured their height in inches and their foot length in centimeters. So pay attention to the units here. To see a scatter plot of the data, go to StatCrunch and open the file name, foot length and height. And then we're gonna look at the scatter plot and then try to, based on what we did last time, right, look at the form, the direction and the strength. So let's go to StatCrunch. And I already have the data pulled up, but go to your stack crunch, open in your groups, and you should see the data there. It's called foot length and height. And so to see the scatter plot, remember from the section 9.1, I gave you instructions. So we're gonna go to stat, we're gonna go to regression, and then simple linear. And in here, we're gonna select our X and Y. So we wanna see if there's an association between someone's foot length and their height. So we're going to select foot length for the X. So that will be our dependent or explanatory um, variable. And then the independent variable or the response variable will be the height. And then you just hit compute. And remember, this gives us the correlation coefficient. And we can also look at that 0.71 and say, oh, there appears to be a strong association but let's look at the scatter plot and now that we're, we see the scatter plot we can see like oh yeah this is a strong association right as the foot length increases the height is increasing as well so there is a positive relationship it appears to be linear right we have a, we can definitely fit a line in here and um, what else? What was this? It was form, direction, and strength. So form, linear, direction, positive, strength, pretty strong um, association based on the scatter plot. And so now that we've seen that, we want to find the line of best fit. So, and that's what we call the regression line. So given a collection of paired sample data, the regression line or line of best fit, or also called the least squares line, is the straight line that best fits the scatter plot of the data. So looking back at this, right, one of the ways, if we were just doing this on our own by hand, we will try to pick. So there's a cluster of data points here and then like a slight like separated but still a cluster of data points there so I would probably choose a point that represents this cluster so maybe that one and then something around here that is a good average of those points and then you pick another point there and so you have how do you find the equation of a line you need two points because you need the slope and the y-intercept and so you would use those two points or any two points really to find the line and then depending on the point that we pick so how I pick this point and then that point my line would look very different right so StatCrunch and a lot of statistical analysis tools they have um, equations programmed in there to try to figure out the best the line of best fit and so that's part of what we're going to analyze in this section is what what makes what makes the regression line the line of best fit. And so the equation of our regression line is usually the y hat, that's our sample, our y predictions, b sub 0 plus b sub 1 x. And this describes the regression line. And so it essentially gives us the relationship between our explanatory variable x, the independent variable, the one on the horizontal axis, and the response variable or y, the dependent variable, the one on the vertical axis. And so here are what they mean. B0, B sub 0 is the y-intercept. B sub 1 is the slope of our regression line. And so we have the equation. For the population parameter, um, we use we go back to using Greek letters. Anytime you see Greek letters as a variable, then you have the population. And then when you see these, especially with the hats or the bars, that's sample data. 
So find the regression equation for foot length versus height. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to StatCrunch, click Stat. We already did that. Select Regression. We already did that. We're going to select Sample Linear or Simple Linear and then select your variables same as we did already and then click compute and we will see the regression line so notice here or oh, actually that if you hover over the red line it gives you the equation so that is our our regression line 38.302 plus 1.033 times x but if we go back one we have all this information notice that we have tells us what our dependent variable is. So our dependent variable is the height. So this is a good way to verify that you have selected your variables correctly. Because if you're like, oh wait, no, my dependent variable should be the foot length, for example. Then you'd be like, oh wait, I input it wrong. So you can go back, you can go to options, edit, and then adjust your variables accordingly. Uh, but in this case, we did it correctly. So let me just make this a little bigger so we can see. So we have our dependent variable is the height. Our independent variable is the foot length. So that is what we want. So X is the foot length. Y is the height. And notice that now here it gives us the equation. So the height is 38.302 plus 1.033 rounding to three decimal places times the foot length. So and our sample size is 20 and we also get the correlation coefficient 0.71 which 0.7 that's pretty high so we, it tells us that we have a strong association between the two variables and so let's write our equation back in our notes So we can put our equation here, height is equal to 38.306 plus 1.03 times the foot length. And so what makes this the best line, the line of best fit? And so here, one way to measure the fit of your line is to calculate the residuals for all the observational units. A residual is the difference between the observed Y value and the Y value predicted by our line. For a particular value so I did this little graph here so the residual each residual so the little i is each residual is the difference between the actual scatter plot value right our data value minus the one predicted by our line so if you look at let's look at d4 here right this is our the dot up here that's our actual um, data value plotted in the scatter plot and then the one on the line is will be our y4 bar right so there will be y4 over here and then y hat 4 so then the residual there will be that distance that vertical distance between them so d4 and so on so the line of best fit is the one that has the smallest residuals so if those residuals were really 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 small all if all of them are really um, small values those distances then we will have an almost a perfect line right so that's the idea that we want our residuals to be really small because that will give us the line of best fit just to give you an idea I'm going to use a different applet so this is StatCrunch and this is our scatter plot of the data of foot length versus height so I'm going to show you a different applet so this is the same scatter plot and one of the things that I we can see is I want to be able to show the residuals Oops. So just to show you, so foot length, height, so these are the same foot length, height, and I can show the regression line. And so there's the same that StatCrunch gave us, and it's the same equation. But now with this applet, I didn't, I'm not going to tell you which applet it is because you won't be using it. I didn't want to spend the time to show you something, um, how to use something that um, you won't really be using. So I'm just doing this to illustrate. So here I'm going to click on show residuals and so notice that now it's giving me that distance between the scatter plot my actual 
data value and the predicted point on the line. And so notice that there are quite a few that are very close. So if I unclick it, so there are quite a few scatter plot data values that are really close to the actual line. And then there are some that are really far away, like this one at 24 is pretty far away from the line. And then this one, like at a little above 28, is also pretty far from the actual line. And so when I click on show residuals again, you can see how big that line is. So the line of best fit ideally will have, will make all of those little red lines the smallest. And so that's what it means to minimize the residuals, means to then have the line of best fit. Now that we have the line of best fit, we want to use the least squares regression to predict the height of someone whose foot length is 28 centimeters. Does this prediction seem reasonable based on the scatter plot? Um, so 28 is over here. So those are the values. So um, 64 is the height of that one. 66. So we want to see what does the line give us? What is the prediction? Notice that it's going to be higher because we have two values at 28, 64 and 66, but the line is higher. So our prediction, our predicted value is going to be higher than 66. So let's see what it is. So what we will do is then put in 28 centimeters into the foot length part of the equation and then do 38.306 plus 1.03 times foot length. And then we get the height, which will be 67.15 inches. Now, if you convert that to feet, um, you have to do the 67, which will give us then the five feet and then seven inches. So 67.15 converts to five feet seven. And then what about a person who's 29 centimeters in foot length? Then that person will be 68.18 inches tall. So same thing, do 29 into the foot length oops, over here and then do 38.306 plus 1.03 times 29 and you will get the height of the person. So how much do this point, this predictions differ? So if you do 68.18 minus 67.15, what do we get? So do that subtraction real quick. And does that number look familiar? When you do 68.18 minus 67.15, right? The difference to the largest minus the smallest one, what you get is 1.03, which is the slope of the line. And that makes sense. Um, now the strategy for predicting our values of y and using the regression line to predict values of y is we wanna make sure that our, the regression equation that we have for, for a line of best fit is a good model. So in checking if our regression equation is a good model, we wanna make sure this three bullet points. So the regression line graph in the scatter plot shows that the line fits the points well. R indicates that there is a linear correlation and then the prediction is not much beyond the scope of the available sample data. So looking back at what that means, notice here's our scatter plot. And so our line fits pretty well. Um, so we can see that it's um, it appears to be a good fit. And then our correlation coefficient was pretty high, showing a strong association between the variables. So we have that. And then what was the third thing? The prediction is not much beyond the scope of the available sample data. So as we were looking for at the number 28, I think it was, notice that the prediction is not far from the available sample data, meaning the other values, right? I think in this case, the 64 and the 66, and our prediction, prediction was the 67.15. So it's not too far from the available data. So if those three things fit, then yes, the regression equation is a good model and we can plug it into the um, equation. And if no, the regression is not a good model because either one of those is not satisfied, then regardless of the value of x, the best predicted value of y is the, the mean, y bar. So you will take essentially all your 
y values and then do the mean of those and that will be the regardless of the value of x that would be the best um, way to predict So in here, I'm just going to show you how to use StatCrunch to make those kinds of predictions. So we're going to use the value of the 29 centimeters, just because that's the last one we did, um, to see the, the prediction. And we're going to use a 95% prediction interval for the person's height. So what we do in here are the StatCrunch um, instructions. And then I already found the interval here. but. I guess let me scroll up so you don't see it as much. <laughs> I guess you can just pause the video and go backwards. Um, so we're going to click stat in the top menu, select regression. So same thing, right? Anytime you're dealing with correlation, you're going to go to stat and, hit and click on regression. We're going to do simple linear. And then from there, it's just what are we doing? We're going to select our X variable and our Y variable. And now we are going to fill in the prediction box with the value that we want for our desired x value. So we're going to put in 29 in the desired x value and we're going to specify a significance level. It defaults to 95, so that should already then be filled out for us. We are looking for a 95% um, prediction interval. So let's go back to StatCrunch and I'm going to go over here to options and edit. Actually, I'm going to do a brand new one. So I'm going to go to stat and regression, simple linear, and we're going to select our variables. So our X variable is the foot length, our Y variable is the height, and we are going to do a prediction of Y. So we're not doing a confidence interval, we're doing a prediction of Y when the X value is 29. So by the way, if you're trying to make that those letters go away optional you can't do so you just put the cursor there and just type in 29 and then our level is 95 so 0 0.095 so just leave that there if I was trying to do a 99% prediction interval then I will put a change that to a 99 but we're doing 20, 95 so I'll just leave it and compute and so now this gives us a new window with our prediction. So there are, the reason I didn't want to change that one is because then you can see, right? This this is the one that I'm pointing at here is the original one that it only shows our R, it shows our regression line, our R and our T statistic and our P value. If we want to do hypothesis testing, this one is showing us now our predicted values at the bottom. So when X is 29, the predicted y is 68.26. What did we get when we did it? For 69, we got, I mean for 29, we got 68.18. And StatCrunch is saying 68.26. Okay, that's due to rounding. Perhaps our um, answers differ a little bit. And then we have a 95% confidence interval for the mean right? This will be for a Y bar, but notice here, this is what we want. 95% PI prediction interval for our new Y value. So this is saying that um, a person with a foot length of 29 centimeters will have a height in the range of 60.48 inches to 76.05 inches right, if you round to two decimal places. So this is then our prediction interval. So that's what you're looking for. So that's the predicted Y value. This is the 95% predicted interval. And so that's what we were looking for, for a prediction interval. So here I put the prediction interval and how to interpret it. So this is a template that you could perhaps use in problems as you work through just to put it in context. So the 95% prediction interval is that interval. This means that if we select some footprint at a crime scene with a foot length of 29 centimeters, we have 95% confidence that the limits of 60.48 and I should have say inches there and 76.05 inches contain the person's height. So this narrows down like 
how tall the criminal will be given the foot length of 29 centimeters so you know and then if when you're in a an investigation unit there are other things that you're looking for but then you're like okay we're looking for a suspect in the 60 inches tall to 76 inches tall and so that gives you an idea so the prediction interval will be much narrower and our estimated height will be much better if we were using a much larger set of sample data instead of only using the 20 pairs of values here so ideally right you want to have large sample data more than 30 or so the next thing is to interpret the slope. So the slope of the least regression line is interpreted as the predicted change in the y variable for every one unit in the x variable. So in this case, our slope was 1.03. So how do we interpret it in context? So what this will mean is that the regression line predicting height based on foot length is 1.03, that's the slope, meaning that for every additional one centimeter increase in foot length, the predicted height increases by 1.03 inches. And remember, because the slope is the rate of change, right? So the slope is 1.03, and I should add units here, inches per centimeter. So when you have, where was our regression line equation? here when you have this is in inches right so it'd be 38.306 inches plus 1.03 and our units here will be inches per centimeter times foot length in centimeters so then this centimeters will cancel those centimeters and you will have 38.306 inches plus whatever this is in inches as well because the the rate 1.3 inches per centimeters will cancel those centimeters and so you end up with inches so that's what this means for every one centimeter increase in the foot length the predicted height increases by 1.3 inches now our correlation coefficient just as we did with in the last section we can find it um, using either by hand as we did in the previous section in section 9.1 or i have also shown you how to use StatCrunch to find it and we can see our correlation coefficient here is 0.71 and so we can just use that but if you want to practice doing it by hand then you can <laughs> um, so does your value of r tell you that the relationship between foot length and height is, is statistically significant and how do you know? What would you need to know? So our, our um, correlation coefficient, sorry, it is, tells us, right, because it's 0.71, that we do have a strong relationship, linear relationship between foot length and height. So now let's carry out a two-sided hypothesis test at the point of height level of significance to determine whether or not there is a statistically significant correlation between a person's foot length and their height. So first thing is write our hypothesis or null and our alternative. So the null is that there's no correlation, there's no association, so R will be zero. And the alternative is that there is a correlation. Now it doesn't specify in which direction we want the correlation to be, so it doesn't say a positive correlation or a negative um, association so then we just do a two-tailed um, test of hypotheses and then we go to stack crunch and then now here I'm going to edit so make sure that I have my same variables my hypothesis matches so zero and equals zero and then not equal zero and we want that's all we need to change so if I had a right side or left sided then I will change this and then hit compute and we can already tell from here our p-value I guess I didn't need to calculate it again we already had it but I just wanted to show you the steps so 0 0.0004 is our p-value and notice that our t-statistic is 4.29 and so just like we did in section um, 9.1 you could do the graph to a critical region and looking up the values and you could also do by the p-value at the standard p-value you could also do it by looking at the 
correlation coefficient r and seeing if the absolute value is greater than the the critical value that you can find from table A6 on our textbook. So doing the p-value way, we can say, well, the p-value is 0 0.0, there were three zeros in there, 0 0.004. So that means we reject the null, no correlation. We have significant evidence to support the alternative hypothesis that there is a correlation between foot length and a person's height. And the last thing here is the coefficient of determination, which is r squared. So once you have r, which we know from StatCrunch, we got it to be 0.71, then r squared, so if you square that, that is what is called the coefficient of determination. And what this is, is the proportion of the variation in y that is explained by the regression line. And so for our example, the coefficient of determination is, will be the proportion of total observed variation in height that is accounted for by changes in the foot length. And so the way that it is computed is the explained variation over the total variation. So this is to kind of understand what's happening. But really the way that you compute it is you take your r and you square it. So 0.71 squared. And notice that when you go to StatCrunch, you have your correlation coefficient and then you have also your r squared is underneath. So 0 0.506 will be our R squared. And so that gives us the proportion of the change in Y that can be explained by the variable X. And I kind of, I did a little visual here of what that means. So the total deviation is the vertical distance um, y minus y bar, which is the distance between the point, a point on the scatter plot and the horizontal line passing through the sample mean of all the y's. So if you take your scatter plot of all the y's and then find the mean, then you will draw a horizontal line to indicate the mean, and so you look at that deviation. So the difference between the line, or regression line, and the mean that's the explained deviation. And that's because those are related, they're coming from the same data values. The unexplained deviation is the um, change from our, our data sample to the line. So that, that deviation we cannot explain. And so then the total deviation is the entire distance. And so that's kind of what this is saying, that the, is the ratio of the explained variation over the total variation, but mainly what it tells you is the proportion of variation in the y that is explained by the regression line. So let me highlight that. And so find the value of the correlation of determination for our example and determine what it means. So the coefficient of determination is, in our case, R squared. So that is the point um, 0 0.0506. So we can round it to point zero five one, which we can convert to a percent, fifty one percent. So this means that fifty one percent of the variation in people's um, blank is attributed to the changes in their blank. So in people's heights. Right, the, the proportion is the proportion of variation in Y that is explained by the regression line. So is the variation people's heights, so let me highlight that or change the color, that is attributed in their foot length. So something to note for maybe better understanding. So if we think of our regression line, our y bar, uh, equals y, or y hat equals the mean, so that horizontal line that we see in the graph, where did I put it? Here, right, that's our y bar. So if we think of that as our worst line, no association with x, then we're seeing how much better the actual regression line is than the worst line, right? And if we have, um, so here's the regression line, and then there's the mean line. 
So the regression line then gives us a much better understanding of the data than just the mean of the y's. Um, so let's try another example. So this, try it on your own and see what you come up with. So in the survey of statistics students at ARC, two of the questions asked were, were their current GPA and how many classes they failed to attend during the past three weeks at the college. The data can be found in the file Miss Class GPA in StatCrunch. So let's explore whether or not there is evidence of strong association between these two variables. So because it says whether or not there is evidence, what kind of test is this going to be if you, when you write your um, hypothesis? This is going to be a two-tail, right? So we are not equal to zero. So do a decision with just R, so determine the number of pairs of the data sample, so find your N, and that's essentially so you can find your degrees of freedom. Specify the level of significance. Let's say at the 0.05 level, level of significance and, and let me make a note here that this is to find your degrees of freedom um, decide if the correlation is significant and remember if the absolute value of r is greater than the critical value the correlation is significant otherwise there's no evidence and how do you find the critical value the critical value you can look back at the notes from section 9.1 or the video from section 9.1 um, critical value is found from table A6 from the textbook. And then interpret the decision in the context of the original claim. You can also do for a decision with the p-value, state the null and alternative hypothesis. So that's where we see, okay, well, whether or not. So that's a two-tailed test. Specify the level of significance. Let's try at the same level of significance at the 0.05 and then identify the degrees of freedom, determine the critical value in rejection regions or the p-value. This you can get from StackCrunch. Actually, both you can get from StackCrunch. Going back to the foot length and height, notice that we look at the slope data, right? So then in this case, our t-statistic is 4.29 and our p-value is 0 0.0004. So you can get those from StackCrunch as well. And then interpret the decision in the context of the original claim. And lastly, is there a value you would like to predict at the 95% level of confidence? So choose a value that you would like to predict, like how many classes in the last three weeks do you want to observe? Um, what happens to the GPA and then so identify the number of other pairs use the regression line equation and then give an x value to find the point estimate y find the left and right endpoints for the prediction interval and then find your um, coefficient of determination find your r square so try those on your own and then I will post a solution on canvas for 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 the three different methods. I guess maybe not the third one because this is a, is there a value that you would like to predict at the 95% level of confidence? So email me if you have any questions.